They handed it over to the CHP at about 9 o'clock this morning. That's when he was traveling on the westbound side of the 60, coming out of Ontario, coming out of the IE towards L.A. County. So back where he came from, generally speaking, San Bernardino County here, now through Ontario, but north of Ontario International Airport. Again, a wide open freeway here for this stolen vehicle suspect, this dark colored older model Camry traveling in the carpool and the far left lane, Stephen Aroxia. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, the volume's always heavy, but typically this stretch of the 10 is, is much busier between about 6 and 7 a.m. when most people are heading uh, into the office. And because this is the eastbound side, during the morning rush, the eastbound sides of the 10, the 16, the 210, are always the lighter volume sides of the freeway because most people head west from the IE into the San Gabriel Valley towards downtown L.A. and Pasadena. As you can see, yeah, wide open. We've been hearing the scanner traffic again, uh, possibility of a spike strike at some point, but that requires quite a bit of coordination with officers up ahead of where the pursuit is going. And they have to uh, essentially assume that the suspect will be continuing on this stretch of freeway here. And those CHP units are uh, positioning themselves up ahead of the pursuit as well. Again, this is on the eastbound side of the 60 coming through Ontario Hill here just to the north of Ontario International Airport. And uh, he's got a wide open freeway. The sun is high enough now that uh, that sun glare that comes into the windshield for these uh, commuters on the eastbound side isn't uh, nearly as bad as it was an hour or so ago. But once he gets to the 15, he has another uh, option there, north or southbound on the 15. And each time he has come across a major intersection, an interchange, he has uh, indeed made transitions. First from the 60 freeway, he hit the 57, decided to go north on the 57, then up uh, to the uh, 605 freeway, took the 605 up to the 10, and then now eastbound on the 10, back into the Inland Empire, and this is where we believe the pursuit started. Once again, do not know why law enforcement uh, looked up. Uh, maybe he was speeding, maybe uh, he uh, ran a red light, and they ran his plates, the car came back as stolen. Out of Beaumont, we're hearing. So we're talking about to well to the east, just getting that information now. So this vehicle was stolen out of Beaumont, He's going at a good clip. Look at this, guys. Uh, 85, 90 miles an hour. You can see his speed in relation to other traffic. And for us up here in Skyfox, once he was heading east and we were trying to catch up to him, it took us some time because we go about 120, 130, and with him going 80-plus miles an hour, he was going away from us. So as you can see here, there's a, there's a CHP unit, again, positioning ahead. What they try to do as well is loosen up, lighten traffic, maybe move traffic to the side just in case, because this guy is starting to drive uh, a bit erratically. Once you get speeds of close to 90 miles an hour like this, you can see him uh, there through the windshield of this uh, black Camry, stolen out of Beaumont here, traveling uh, anywhere from 80 plus miles an hour as we approach the 15 freeway. And again, uh, Steve Aroxy, he may decide to transition either to the north or southbound sides of the 15. It just looks like it's the color of the seat, and as far as we know, according to uh, our communication with the CHP, just the driver is the uh, lone occupant. It looks like something's in the uh, back seat, though, on the right side there, but that could just be uh, some clothing there. As far as we know, maybe a Starbucks cup there in the uh, center console as well. All right, everyone, Samia here. You're looking at live images of a high-speed chase in Southern California, the stolen Toyota Camry traveling on the eastbound Interstate 10 freeway. It's 9.30 a.m. Traveling at a high rate of speed. You can see the officer pursuing him. The vehicle traveling at about 85, 90 miles per hour. These are live images coming in from Southern California. Again, a stolen Toyota Camry being pursued on the eastbound Interstate 10 in and around Ontario in the Inland Empire of Southern California.
staying on the 10. Now, just to give you guys some background information, this vehicle started being pursued at about 8.45 in the morning after a report of a stolen vehicle in Riverside County. Again, the car in question is a black Toyota Camry. The pursuit also took place on the 60 freeway near Moreno Valley before the driver entered the Pomona and Diamond Bar areas. That's when the driver exited onto the northbound 605 and 10 freeways in the Covina area. Apparently, the driver even threw out a plastic bag from the window before lighting a cigarette. Again, the vehicle traveling on the eastbound 10 in Ontario. These are live images coming in courtesy of our Fox. It looks like it is an older model Toyota Camry, perhaps from the early 2000s. Leading police on a chase on the Interstate 10 freeway eastbound in the Ontario Inland Empire area. We are reading some of the comments coming in on Facebook and on YouTube. I know some of you questioning, when is the suspect going to run out of gas? Well, we do know that the pursuit has only gone on for about 40, 50 minutes or so. Started around 8.45 this morning. So about 50 minutes ago, this pursuit started. Um, and it's possible that this pursuit could last a while if he had a full tank of gas in the stolen vehicle. Again, Police are pursuing the stolen vehicle. Reports of a stolen vehicle came out of Riverside County. And now this stolen black Camry being pursued on the Interstate 10, traveling eastbound in the Inland Empire. You can see the vehicle is traveling at a high rate of speed. This is all the information we have right now, but as long as we have these aerials coming in, we will bring them to you live here on Fox 10 News Now. By uh, tractor trailers, by big rigs here, as you can see, many come into view here. And uh, the danger level is high here. The uh, energy level is high here as well. And they want to bring a safe end to this, and there just isn't a good opportunity to do that at this point, only to track him. If they decide he's driving at such a high rate of speed and the public is in jeopardy, these commuters down here who don't know that it's coming up uh, from behind, and the majority of them likely don't, then they will back off and track him from the air, which they do at times. We've seen so many of these pursuits uh, end tragically uh, in uh, horrible accidents uh, where innocent people are killed. As you can see, just the driver. I know some of the viewers tuning in asking me specifically how fast the vehicle was going well i know according to the chopper reporter at our sister station in los angeles he reported the vehicle going at a rate of about 85 or 90 miles per hour again a high-speed pursuit taking place in southern california i believe in the ontario area oh, the latest update now says that it is in rialto california for those of you unfamiliar with Southern California, or maybe just perhaps vaguely familiar with Rialto, 
or the Southern California area, excuse me. Rialto is a town in San Bernardino County. This is in the area where the 10 meets the 215. For those of you based here in Arizona, perhaps you've taken Interstate 10 to Los Angeles and back. So you should have a rough idea of where this area is, where the 10 meets the 215 in, in, in the Inland Empire. We appreciate all the viewers that are tuning in on both Facebook Live as well as YouTube. If you are new to our Facebook channel, we encourage you to hit that like button on Facebook. That way you'll always be notified whenever we have any sort of live breaking news, whether it's a high-speed pursuit like the one you're watching now or a police protest. We covered those protests extensively in Charlotte last week, so I encourage you to hit that like button on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fox10phoenix. That way you'll be up to date whenever there is breaking news that, right here in Arizona as well uh, as throughout the nation has been and the world. In his speeds, anywhere from 85, 90 miles an hour plus here as he continues to make his way eastbound on the 10 freeway here coming through Rialto, Colton. And then he's going to have another interchange uh, up ahead here as well. And he has the opportunity to make a north or southbound transition on the 215 freeway. In the center divider area there, 85, 88 miles an hour at this point. They are looking for another K-9 unit, uh, as Jim just said. They like to have those on hand so that once these pursuits come to an end, they have that option to use a dog, which we have seen so many times in the past. The only thing somewhat atypical about this pursuit is uh, the time involved. The majority of pursuits uh, last just a couple of minutes. This one now likely going on an hour, perhaps even more. We don't know the exact time it started, but we do know that just before 9 a.m., that's when there was that agency handoff to the California Highway Patrol. So that was 45 minutes ago. How much gas this Camry has? Unclear. And if you are just tuning in, this Camry reportedly stolen out of the Beaumont area this morning. The CHP is tracking it on the ground. Three units in the air, a CHP helicopter as well. And we are coming up uh, on the very busy flyaway interchange here in the heart of San Bernardino, the 10 freeway at the 215. So let's see if he weaves over to the right and decides to make a transition. Once again, a lot of times uh, these suspects will go back into neighborhoods in terms of uh, finding a location of where where he wants to go. Uh, he's familiar with the area, so he may want to uh, uh, come back here. Now we're widening out, and we are not seeing those CHP units behind him anymore, so they may very well have Again, those of you just joining us, you're looking at live images coming in from right. Southern like California, a high-speed chase a taking place here. on the Interstate 10 like eastbound in Southern California, the specifically the Inland, air, uh, Inland Empire area of Southern, Southern California. Now, this pursuit started about an hour ago. Those of you just tuning in, this pursuit started around 8.45. We just started carrying it about 10, 15 minutes ago as soon as we got this, these live images in. So the pursuit started in Riverside County around 8.45 after reports of a stolen vehicle. You're now looking at that stolen vehicle on the screen, this black Toyota Camry being pursued by police. Doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. It has been traveling at a speed of about 85, 90 miles per hour, perhaps 
perhaps even faster. I'm looking on the screen now. He could be going as fast as 100 miles per hour. Um, he is evading police in the Inland Empire of Southern California. And Stephen Aroxy, we are getting into an area just to uh, warn you where we start to lose communication. My ability to hear you uh, uh, becomes less and less. So I'll do the best I can to uh, keep my communication line going with you. I, they're, they're back there. I see them. They're just, uh, they're probably a half a mile, quarter mile back. It is better. I got uh, IP again. Uh, anybody I have, uh, I hear. All right, guys, looks like the station in L.A. is speaking with California Highway Patrol, so let's go ahead and listen in on that conversation happening now. You know, we have seen this happen a few times, not that often, but sometimes these guys do get away. It happens from time to time. Um, what are your thoughts on someone like this guy, who obviously has nothing to lose, going fast, driving erratically, who knows what's to come? Will he gun it all the way until the end, until he runs out of gas? Or do you think the spike strips will play a factor? Well, a, a multi, multi, uh, uh, <laughs> question there to go back to the, the beginning actually 30 percent according to chp statistics 30 percent of the time uh these suspects actually get away now we don't we don't see that uh when we're watching them on tv because we've got so many helicopters and a lot of the law enforcement but about 30 percent of the time they're able to get away from uh, from officers uh, as far as what he's going to do at the end it's really hard to say i mean he's very very unpredictable all they have uh, really when you think about this is a property crime a stolen vehicle they really don't have any any uh any uh, authority at this point for deadly force. So what he does at the end of this pursuit is going to change that back and forth maybe several times if he comes out with something in his hand that they think is a gun or if he uh, starts shooting, in fact, or if, he's, uh, if he takes an, a hostage, uh, you know, grabs another vehicle or something. All of these things constantly change law enforcement's posture, and they have to react immediately to these things. It's very, very challenging for them. Uh, so at the end of this pursuit, uh, to answer your question, it's, it's going to be very tense. That's a, probably the, the worst part of the, of the pursuit other than an accident. Jim, uh, as we're watching this, uh, you do think that usually if they're on surface streets, they are piling up infraction after infraction, breaking the law at every street. A location, Erica. I mean, there's so much.
are. Do they not want to know where this is? All right, guys, just a quick update. I'm going to update the lower third as well. The vehicle has now transitioned onto the 215 freeway. The northbound 215 in San Bernardino is no longer on Interstate 10. So let me just take a second while I can, uh, so I can update the lower third on the screen. Stand by. in the car he could be a uh, person that's going to be going back to jail uh, there's a lot of things that play into this that nobody knows until the end game and officers have to keep all of these things in play if you will uh, and, and, and basically put a matrix over the top of every single incident to see where these folks fall at any given moment in their pursuit Rick uh, we're going to check in with you and see where this guy's at at this point all right guys it looks like the suspect has now pulled over. The suspect has now pulled over. It looks like he may be surrendering. Again, guys, you're looking at live aerials. Looks like the suspect now surrendering, walking. Again, guys, this, these are live images. Anything can happen. Viewer discretion is advised. The suspect has exited the vehicle, is now walking across the freeway. The suspect is now walking along the southbound side of Interstate 215 in San Bernardino. Again, guys, viewer discretion is advised. Anything is possible. These are live images coming in right now. The suspect is walking along the southbound side of Interstate 215. Again, viewer discretion is advised. Anything is possible. He led police on an hour-long pursuit pulled over on the northbound side of Interstate 215, crossed over, and is now on the southbound side of Interstate 215.
Again, guys, for those of you just joining us, we do want to caution you. Viewer discretion is advised. We just watched this high-speed chase in Southern California in the Inland Empire. The suspect abandoning his vehicle on the northbound side of Interstate 215, then crossing over, walking on over to the southbound side of Interstate 215. You can look, you can see the suspect there on the side of the freeway. Again, these are live images. The suspect does have something in his hand. It's unclear what exactly he's carrying. As you can see, traffic slowing down as the suspect walks back and forth across the lanes. Again, guys, viewer discretion is advised. You're looking at live images coming in from Southern California. Now, this pursuit started in the Riverside area around 845 after reports of a stolen vehicle out of Riverside County. Now, the suspect led police on pursuit. He traveled on the 60 freeway before getting on to Interstate 10 eastbound. From Interstate, Interstate 10 eastbound, he then transitioned to the 215 northbound. It was on the 215 northbound freeway that the suspect then pulled over. We thought he may have been surrendering. The suspect exited the vehicle, crossed the highway, and walked on over to the opposite side. He's now sitting on the side of southbound traffic on Interstate 215. Again, viewer discretion is advised. These images are live. They're coming in right now, and anything is possible. We have no idea what the suspect's next move is. We appreciate all of you guys tuning in right here on Fox 10 News Now.
Again, guys, these are live images coming in right now. It looks like police canines ready to approach the suspect on the 215 freeway, the suspect walking on the freeway in San Bernardino, California. Many people wondering what exactly the suspect has in its in his hand. Some people saying it's a sick a stick. Other people saying it's a machete. It's unclear from this vantage point exactly what is in the hand of the suspect. Again, guys, we don't have any confirmation as to what object the suspect is holding. We just want to caution you. Viewer discretion is advised. Anything can happen. The suspect in this high-speed pursuit has now caused the Interstate 215 freeway to shut down in Southern California. This is in San Bernardino. Police were pursuing a stolen Camry, Toyota Camry, on the northbound 215. The suspect then pulled over, parked, walked across the northbound side into the southbound side. Traffic has now shut down, and you can see that the suspect is communicating somewhat with law enforcement. It's unclear exactly what is going to happen next. Again, guys, these are live images. We want to caution you that anything is possible. We appreciate all of you tuning in. Stay with us. Fox News Now will have more continuous coverage of this high-speed pursuit in Southern California. All right, joining me now is Troy Hayden. Troy, we have been watching this high-speed pursuit over the course of the last half hour. It really started at 845, though, in Southern California. And it's no longer a pursuit, but really sort of a standoff with police. Oh, it's an absolute standoff. And you know what? Uh, we were just watching that over there. Um, time is on the side. What they're trying to do at this point, I would imagine, is just calm him down. Right. And end this without violence. Because right now... You know, nobody needs uh, another suspect being shot right. at this point. So it seems to me they're doing the right thing. They've got the dog right there. Those dogs are real motivators to stop this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to get bitten by the dog. And we don't know what this guy's going through. You know, I, I've said that a lot. When we see these chases, 
you know, what leads somebody to have the irrational thought that if I drive fast enough, I'm going to get away from police? Right, right. You know, it, it doesn't work. And I do want to pull up this image right now. This is coming in from Fox in Los Angeles. They actually have a view from the ground. So I do want to pull this one up right now, yeah. this image from the ground. Yeah, and that's a good shot. I mean, you can see, you know, he's obviously agitated. The officers are there. They are heavily armed. The one you can see right to your right has a, a, a long rifle on mm -hmm. him, a long gun, right. at a, like AR-15 style looking weapon. He's not going anywhere. Right now, he's not a threat to any of the people out there. Now, see that gun behind him? See that yellow gun? Yeah. I believe that's a beanbag gun with the yellow markings on it. Oh, interesting observation. So he may be coming in from the back to try to use some sort of a non-lethal round, mm -hmm. which would make sense to me. Right, and from this angle, you can see that the suspect is communicating with police. It's just unclear exactly what he's saying <coughs> to them. Okay, here we have another, oh my gosh, okay. Looks like he is. It's like he's getting ready to go. Now that wouldn't be that big of a drop. That appears to me to be like a maybe a five or six foot drop. Right. But then is it, I mean, well, it's hard to tell though, right, from this angle. Right, so right now he's on the southbound side of the freeway. He had walked across the northbound side of the 215 into the southbound side. Now he's possibly going back to the northbound side, or who knows what he's going to do next. Is this the live one up here for yes. us? Okay. Again, viewer discretion is advised. Anything is possible. These are live images coming right. in. Now, if he jumps here, I don't believe this is going to be any sort of a fatal jump. It'll be a long ways down. Again, here's a guy coming right behind him. Watch. Here we go. Got him. All right. Well, that was quite an operation there. A little bit of a fight going on. Wow. At least five, six officers there. That was a big officer who went suspect. after him, too. How about I mean, that? He had like a football move. I think that guy's played a little ball. Well, there the suspect you go. wasn't willing to surrender peacefully. They needed all of the um, well, help look, they could get. And I, let me say this. That was textbook. And that was, in my opinion, as a journalist who's watched a lot of these things, the CHP handled that very well. And the mm -hmm. bottom line is, this guy is uh, going to live to see another day. Uh, I don't know if, you know, who knows if he's on drugs, he's had a really bad uh day he's got a bad mental health situation right. you know he's not he's not dead and uh, and he's no longer a threat to anybody else right well that's the most important part I mean here we watched as he pulled over on the side of the freeway started just walking through you know some viewers just very worried and concerned that he was trying to get in front of a vehicle right oh I thought for a second when he first started walking across the median I thought for sure that that's what he was trying to right. do was get run over right because there was all kinds of semis and and I couldn't believe how long it took CHP to get back around that other side of the freeway remember how long he was over there it had to be like five or six minutes and he was just over there and people were, were past him but again excellent job by CHP on this takedown I don't know exactly what happened earlier in the chase we only we picked it up just after nine I right. think, nine fifteen something like that but this is the best possible outcome. Absolutely. As far as me watching, I didn't see anybody injured. I didn't see any wrecks. And it looks like this suspect, again, could get treated for whatever issues he has and also prosecuted for the crimes he committed here. Right, right. Again, the police were pursuing this vehicle because it was reported stolen out of Riverside County. He led police on a pursuit for about an hour. So it started at 8.45 a.m. I would say that around 9.45, 9.50 is when he pulled over on the side of the 215 northbound freeway. And that's when this went from a pursuit to a standoff in the middle of a freeway. And which is an odd ending to a chase, something you just don't see very often. Right, absolutely. You know, generally, you know, it, it ends in a couple different ways or a few different ways. There's, they spin them out with a pit maneuver and they're stuck. They crash into some innocent victim, which right. I think is the worst, right. if you ask me. A mom and her kid's driving around a, uh, you know, in an intersection. They get hit in their minivan. Or they stop by like a relative's house and surrender there. Mm -hmm. That happens sometimes. Right. Or they ditch in a neighborhood and try to run. Mm -hmm. But you hardly ever see them stop and start walking down the side of the road. No. So that was odd. Looks like his leg might be a little cut there, but For it's the a lot better than a bullet. Right. A relatively peaceful effort.